Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and we've got three beautiful guests as always on the Some Ordinary Podcast. We got Nux Taku, yep. we've got Oompaville, and we've got the gamer from Mars. Ladies and gentlemen, today is going to be a fine day where we discuss $8 a month Twitter, uh, you know, fees. I feel like we should just dive into it, okay? Yeah, Who it's... hears pain? No way. Me, I will. Who hears doing I, I'd pay for one month just, just for the meme of it. Uh, I'm one of those me- I'm one of those weird nerds that rides Elon Musk's Bro, you're a Yakubian nerd. I'm just kidding, I'm not. Oh. I don't know. I just don't understand why it's bad. I- I'd pay for it. I pay for YouTube premium. Yeah, because that's yeah. gonna actually I, help your I, experience. I know, but I like supporting companies that I that I use and make money from. You make money from Twitter? I mean I get well, yeah. promotion from Twitter, yeah. Obviously, I've I've met up with all of you guys through Twitter. Oh, that's actually true. I know. The bird app changed all of our lives. The only reason I have a Twitter is for DMs. That yeah. is true. Twitter, you know, honestly, like Twitter should be like I would pay eight bucks a month if I could just DM every random Twitter account too. That, that's what I would do if they <laughs> would just give you forced DM entry. Forced that would be funny. Direct, yeah, exactly. Backdoor entry. <laughs> <laughs> pay eight dollars like a month can't to block. fucking troll people. You can't block me. I can force DM send it to you. <laughs> I'm like the FBI. <laughs> They should have like an anti block list feature, like for eight bucks a month. Like if somebody block lists you, you just like get thrown off of it. It's like, no, 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 you can't get rid of me. I am here forever. You can't Honestly, block or mute people unless you pay money. Yeah, ex- oh, I feel like I feel like huge. a lot of those features would be. That's a great feature, dude. If you think about it, it's like Twitter for like it's like if a Chinese like or South Korean like mobile game version of like Twitter existed, where like True, basic yeah. access is free. You have to buy energy. <laughs> You have to buy coins and energy to be able to post. Every, yeah, every tweet, Rick, you only get 10 tweets a day. You, you have to wait 24 day. hours between tweets. And based on the amount of likes, it recharges your stamina to see if you can mm-hmm. keep tweeting. Yeah. I would absolutely love if they turned Twitter into the most, like, built, like, Excel spreadsheet game imaginable. You know, the spiciest takes. Twitter RPG is happening. What if they based it off, like, uh, likes and, like, how much you could tweet was based off likes and karma and shit like that to where... You, you kind of treated it like Twitter to where uh, if you have like a lot of positive engagement, you know, then you can tweet more. You know, your, your cooldown uh, is lowered. But if you're like really hated, like like Keemstar would tweet, be able to tweet like once a week <laughs> or something, you know, because you'd have so much negative karma. They'd, they'd, have, they'd like they'd like immediately like pre- it's like the ratio prevention. Like it's like, all right, you can only have one hot take <laughs> a week there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The <laughs> no, it's like yeah. Time you get ratio, yeah. They just delete your account. No, no, no. When you when you I, pay the eight bucks a month, you cannot get banned. You can say whatever you want, and nothing will happen mm-hmm. to you. <laughs> you can say shit. I, I would buy it if they had a new tab on the mobile app where it was like the 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 the, the, the R tab is all I'm going to say it for the sake of you know green sponsorships. And then you press it, and it's just a fucking row of the dumbest shit ever said that day. <laughs> No. That would be sick. That'd I, be great. I, I feel like most social media networks need to do that. Like, I go on Reddit and it's like top of all time, and uh, I'm just like, what about the most disliked of like the day? Mm-hmm. What about the most like destroy? What about the dumbest thing of the entire month? That's what. Like, I would I would pay Reddit every month just to see the most like disliked shit Same. every month. You know, Absolutely. like who is the dumbass yes. of, of of January? Like, what comment? You know, which because con- yeah. it's probably not posts. It's probably comments on posts that got a lot of upvotes. Yeah. You know, like the just the biggest idiots of of uh, Reddit. You can see it every month. Reddit does exactly. have the controversial tab on uh, on each thread to see what is the the most uh, divisive thing someone stated. Um, but yeah, expanding that to a larger scale that would be interesting. To be fair, though, like I, I don't you... mean to be controversial, but we already have that feature on Twitter. Right? The feature that you get to see the worst tweets. They're all the tweets with a lot of likes. All of those. Yeah, they, they, uh, well, it's a feature that's happened for years. Like any account that has like a giant check next to it, it's like usually they're just saying the most (laughs) dumb shit imaginable. Can I pay more more than $8 to, to like do other stuff? I don't know. I think that they should verify every account. They have to pay $8 to be unverified. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how many people. (laughs) Also, what are they? they Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, what are the chances that uh, what are the chances that they 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 come up with a, the new Vine? He like remakes Vine and, and just turns Twitter into like Vine as well, like to make it uh, turns it into one because he wants to make the X app or whatever that thing he said. Um, our God King. Yeah, I think the Vine thing is pretty 
I think Vine might actually be a thing because they're talking about banning TikTok again over national security. Yeah, I good. That. That'd be good. Yeah. I, I mean, like banning TikTok. So when it comes to national security, I find it weird. It's like so the reason they're so hard on TikTok is because the NSA can't backdoor into them like all the other social media networks that are like, yeah, guys, this is real national security, which is kind of true. It's like how many politicians now in an election cycle are just downloading TikTok and like absolutely promoting through it. I feel like it's weird when you got like a foreign country and now they can like act, kind of control elections, to be honest, like whoever has a social media service can control like the actual flow of information. Like, I think it's funny to laugh at Elon Musk's $44 billion spending on Twitter. But like, if you think about it, the dude owns the fourth most used website in the world. Mm-hmm. Is so really it's like, four? yeah, it's number four. Like oh. first is Google, then YouTube, Facebook, then Twitter. And then like, I think Instagram or something. Wow. And it's not profitable. How the f- is that even possible? I, I dude, I, it, I don't, don't like. I think, yeah, the the ads are. I barely see a lot of ads on Twitter. Dude, if he and, fixes like, that, okay. that'd be crazy. Yeah, like the Twitter ads are so weird. Like I'm scrolling by, and it's like after like uh, you know a few scrolls, it's like, would you like to buy a GM truck? I'm like, fucking no. Yeah, the <laughs> no, ads are also ever. extremely <laughs> yeah. not personalized. I find. I feel like the most effective like, Canada gets the same ads. The, the most effective phone. ads. Are just like the like Wendy's posting and shit. Sorry, next, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. no. yeah, individuals no. advertising through Twitter is yep. great, but the actual promoted tweets, those are all ads. You know, like, do you think like, Elon can institute something? I, I think this would be a horrible idea, mind you. But where everyone that posts a video on Twitter, there's like a two second ad before the video plays if you click on it. They do have. Doesn't that already pre-roll. happen? They do have no. pre roll ads on the videos. Yeah. Just, they have pre roll ads on Twitter. Them. I've never seen people just that. Not, yeah. not, people just don't buy them. I there's there's websites, same thing with Reddit, where they're not able to convert the advertisers into people the, the advertising just doesn't really convert to a lot of people buying the product. With something like Instagram yeah. or YouTube, it's really tailored to the person. There's a lot of uh, you know, lifestyle content on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So you could sell clothing to them or houses or furniture. With Twitter, it's just like people complaining about politics uh, you, you could do political ads but didn't twitter stop doing political ads re- a year i think ago? it did so it's like the one thing that would have worked bring them back of, bring it back of course uh, dude I, I love political ads i really like Me it too. when they get so fucking mm-hmm. like when they get so backbitey like especially in canadian ads too like i don't know if you see this all the time next but I like do. whenever election season happens yeah when election season happens it's like this person sold crack in 1992 <laughs> we know. should murder them from ever running it off they're just extremely <laughs> personalized ads like just roasting each other like 2016 youtube and the funniest thing is like they're all in english and french <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah they get like a whole translator to split it up too. how do you say late <laughs> in french late it, don't say uh... it don't say it it's tired Oh. oh yeah okay, no, let's not... okay. yeah 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 you can't yeah no no i, I was about to i was about to like literally think because I, I was I, I was thinking of like the french word for it for you and be goddamn we're about to get like yellowed again <laughs> no but yeah no no that's not no but like the the, the, the political ads are always the best because this never has to do with anything political right it's always like you shouldn't vote for for uh this candidate because he's a democrat this guy <laughs> sold crack <laughs> like you know what this man <laughs> murdered a bunch of people in the year 90 like holy f- man jesus this person doesn't take care of their you know we looked at child support like payments in the last 10 years not one payment has went from this account who owns it this politician and i'm just like god damn these people are like vultures man it's like you know people look at drama like like youtube drama like it's 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 so beneath them or something and i'm like these are the same people that latch onto these political ads watch the hell out of them it's like it's like the political community on youtube right like it's all just like mutt slinging and like beefs and drama between each other it's like man how are you all that different like really like Okay, when we commentate on something, when like commentary people jump onto like any, you know, like a, a, a drama or like a controversial topic, I feel like there's a lot more sincerity and research put into that than like the political channels. Like I've watched political channels and it's like, here's a Ben Shapiro video. And before they even get into the Ben Shapiro video or discuss it, it's like, you have to get the whole idea. They have to like front load you with like Ben Shapiro is an 
see evil. He's like a ra- like race trading. Like it's it's insane, you know. And vice versa. Like if if in Fox News puts up some like lefty side, they're immediately like discrediting this person based on their affiliation before like you actually get to the content. It's like I think, I think yeah. it's what because the f- like when when you have YouTubers beefing with each other, it's you have to explain mm. to your audience why you hate this person. When it comes to politicians, it's like you already know why this person's evil. Now let's talk. Mm-hmm. Do you guys know who Marion Barry is? No. Oh, uh, no. He was the mayor of D.C. and like uh, the District of Columbia in like uh, the 80s, 90s, somewhere in there. He got caught smoking crack by the FBI while he was still the mayor of D.C. District of oh Columbia. Oh, my God. Like, literally where like the... my mayor. The, yeah, the, didn't the mayor of Toronto, didn't he smoke crack too? Yeah. Hell yeah, he Rob smoked Ford. some cool crack. Oh, Rob, Rob Ford, Ford, yep. A <laughs> couple of mayors been smoking crack. Yeah. <laughs> Must be good shit. And these people don't believe in an Illuminati. <laughs> Dude, it's it's so funny when I when I watch the crack video from Rob Ford again, it's just like he's kind of just chilling over there with like his crack dealer just smoking the pipe. And they're just chatting like nothing's going on. I'm like, dude, you run one of the biggest cities in North America. What the yeah, It immediately man, reminds just, me of the He's just waiting for the Twitter ad to call him out next week. <laughs> Well, God, God rest in peace. I mean, he's passed away. His brother's driving the goddamn province into the ground, anyways. Oh, Rob but Ford Jesus died. Christ, yeah, died yeah. Rob Ford did die. Ago. Oh, yeah, too much crack years ago. Had no, 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 it was a cancer-related thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't think ca- smoking crack causes cancer? Not this kind of cancer. Either. I don't have once, empirical once evidence for that. Has, <laughs> once someone has cancer, they might as well smoke crack. What kind of cancer did he have? Um, I forget. I forget which off the top. Lung of my head. cancer. I don't think so. I don't think it was lung. I know. I know. I know you're trying to like. I know you're trying to discredit big crack right now. And it's just not working. <laughs> I feel like if uh, if uh, you know eating red meat causes cancer, smoking crack probably causes cancer. Well, like, it's bad. This is good for whole, ads, by the way, guys. Crack is bad. Yeah, crack is terrible. Crack can cause cancer and bad bad yeah, it's life. Bad. Don't crack do that. Is just a bad life choice. So you just don't do it. Like. Meth- don't do any of that nonsense to begin with. Just don't d- don't even get into it. Like one of our guests, Destiny, like we've had him uh, two times on the show. I remember like the funniest thing ever. Like he's the guy that took like meth completely by mistake once. Yeah. And I'm just like, damn, I don't even understand people. Who- like, how does that even happen? It, it Well, apparently it's hard to like it, it's, it's pretty easy to confuse it between other substances. But I'm just like, man, I lived a whole life drug free. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, I've never done anything hard. You know what I mean, like anything crazy, insane. And I'm glad. I'm I'm happy for it. I just don't get like the whole like appeal of it, jumping into it, and then making like the whole bad life choice from it. You know, like I don't want to sound like a dare presentation, but like you know, if you put like crack in front of me, I'm like I don't have any reason to 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 risk it or try it. You know, what's yeah. the point? Me same. Yeah, I yeah I don't uh, yep, I don't do drugs. Nope. You know like- you know it's funny like any form of self-improvement people like just hate somehow i think because uh it's it's funny because like i get dms and it's not about nux people are cool with me being friends with nux like me and nux are like like it's fine but me and oompy they're like you know oompy wow he's, he's How like the tables he's, have yeah, turned in the beginning of the podcast wa- it was the other way around all right no, no, it's just like personal stuff. Like, no, it's nothing I care about. It's like Oompy, like, it's some, somehow it like comes off that Oompy's like some weird right winger guy. <laughs> like, he loves guns. He's like, I must be self improved, no fap, eat right, be healthy. And I'm just like, what the f did he say was wrong? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just like, what, what did he say? Wait, Oompy told you not to get fat. I'm like, wow, congratulations. I, a... I don't know, man. I guess that, that makes you a hard right winger guy, too. Yeah, I've heard so many people say like, "Dude, I just thought you were this crazy like right wing guy, just like evil and stuff." And then I watched some of your videos, and I was I realized that you weren't. And I, I'm always it's always so surprising to me. I just don't understand. I guess I just don't pick up on the uh, the right wing social cues that well. I don't understand what I'm doing. That's like I I don't I think right-wing. it's like sometimes we've had this discussion with like art as well too regarding the insult side of things. Like sometimes people look at self improvement and they get like really fucking ass mad about it for some reason, like. Okay, what, what like if you tell me not to get fat, right, or like eat right, is that necessarily a bad point? I say I, I would say if I told you not to get fat, that's fairly insensitive. But I if I expressed my appreciation for you and my desire to have you to live on this earth for as, for as long as possible, and that included being thin and trim and eating healthily, that's probably a better way to go around it. But if I was just like, don't get fat, you know, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, fair enough. 
I feel like that's something, something's probably wrong with that. But at the same time, it's, it's the same words, just different, just a different path to get to the same destination. It's just one's a little mm-hmm. more offensive, I guess. Some, something, <laughs> I, something I found interesting recently, I just connected this in my brain, is there's like this huge fight over if Lizzo's attractive or not on the internet. And yeah, these people will just sit there and say, Lizzo's the most beautiful woman in the world, and they'll ramble on about that. And I'm thinking to myself, this woman is a very talented artist, and you guys are just objectifying her by her looks yeah just as yeah. the people that you hate do exactly how about how about how fucking athletic she is have you ever watched one of her shows yeah she's I've fucking seen her show. Bro, she's I've seen her play instruments dancing she's around talented. like a fucking fool on stage and a fool mm-hmm. in like a good way she like she moves more she gets a better workout every time she performs than i have i ha- ever have for sure. Mm-hmm. She's well, so athletic. You have to think she's do. It's basically if we did that same performance, but had a 200 yeah. pound vest on. It's Im- very it. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. I yeah. like the whole idea of attractiveness is so weird. Like when I think of attractiveness, there's like so many more factors into it versus like just, you know, even physical, like on somebody, obviously it's very important, but it's like, you're right art like people who are jumping in on the comments is like hottest queen i've ever seen in my life i'm like damn okay i think you're just saying this 300 times to make yourself feel like less of an asshole but i'm just gonna say it like it is i'm not physically attracted to lizzo but i've never really thought about that you know at all i'm like oh talented artist because i saw her play i saw her perform like if i haven't seen her move around like all of that i've just like heard her it's music impressive. and like heard stuff impressive yeah. shit and i'm like oh okay cool person awesome nice you know, it's the same reason why I look at like if a YouTuber pops up and they're overweight or something, but they're being funny and entertaining. Do you think the overweight shit ever mattered? Do you think I want to f- that person specifically? Yeah. No, I'm just yeah. there to consume and watch their content. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think there's a big difference between being prejudiced against fat people and wanting mm-hmm. them to be healthy. Like that's uh, yeah. That's a big yeah. I feel difference. like it doesn't. There, there's like a very clear line. I don't really understand why people why you can get misconstrued for wanting the best for people as something that's fat phobic. No, like if somebody tells you, it's like, hey, eat right, get healthier. To me, that automatically translates like, oh, they care enough to see me live longer. So, okay, Mm -hmm. maybe I'll like change life. That's about it. I'm sure there's people that'll take it personally because obviously they're not in a position to change, you know, weight as easily, or maybe there's other factors, but it's like, I don't know, man. The internet's super fucking wild about it. It's so it's so weird. It's so binary seeing the internet sometimes and like forming or like, it's the same thing with Noopy. It's like, unless, if you actually watch the content and talk to the guy for more than like five minutes, it's like, I don't understand where the perceptions build. You know, but those I mean? first like, five minutes, I'm racist as shit. <laughs> aren't we all though? Like, like, <laughs> I don't know. I see you on Sigma male uh, clip channels all the time with your <laughs> goal cast. Andrew I'm T. on goal cast now, bro. Dude, I, they just show up on my YouTube shorts. For some reason I'm caught in the, the YouTube short, uh, Sigma male red pill rabbit hole where that's the only thing they recommend to me and Dude. I always see your face show up on it with like it's millions so of weird. views from those clips from the Andrew Tate interview it's crazy it's fucking insane yeah what do you guys think of Sigma males are you guys a Sigma Alpha Beta Gamma Delta I'm, I'm a I'm a sissy male <laughs> I'm a sissy male I, I, I really love the Sigma male, like actual memes that you'll find on Facebook, like the really joke, like the jokey ones on social media with like Sigma male. It's like, like it'll just be the most outlandish statement. And then it's like, it doesn't matter, boys. It's all about making that money. It's all about getting that. It's all about building the stacks, you know, getting the next match. I was like, the one where it's like, edge for well, the best, the best one I've ever seen. It's the funniest one. It's like gambling. You can lose a hundred percent of your money, right? No, no, no. It's like, what is it like gambling? You can like double your money or like lose a hundred percent. You can lose 100%, but win like a thousand percent or some bullshit. It's like, you do the math. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> like, oh, like dude, we're laughing at it, but there's like somebody out there that like sits down and believes all of this shit. Like insanely. And it, it, it is, I don't know, it, it's, it, the Sigma world is just wild to me, man. It's like, I, last time we talked about it, I think the best takeaway for it is like, yeah, it's easy to demonize, but we've never had like a proper alternative, you know what I mean? For the people that get caught up in that rabbit hole, right? Like, That's why yeah, it it's exists, easy to be like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, these people are wrong. Okay, why are they wrong? Explain why. And then it's like, th- then you never like meet them halfway and tell them why or like give them a route out of it. It's just... You know, you're right. That is exactly why it exists. I'm amazed people could say Sigma male with a straight face. It I'm, impresses me every time. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Sigma male. Ironically, I am. 
no, See, like I, thought, I actually I am thought a it was all done ironically until you hear people actually preaching the Sigma grind set and meaning it. But I have I've never seen someone preach the, literally saying Sigma grind set without it being ironic. Right, but that's what I thought too. No, you see people. I think it's a younger demographic, obviously, that somehow fell into some rabbit hole, and they use the term "sigma grind set" unironically. I have seen it. I've seen people in real life, not on the internet, saying "sigma grind set." Hey, man, my aunt's kids. I know they're my cousins. Fuck <laughs> you, my aunt's kids. Literally, you know, they they speak they speak like Tate's now. They actually unironically do. Like uh, they're like, do you make stacks, Muda? And I'm like, mad oh, stacks. Like, Are I'm you making bread there, and like, bank? They they did they did. It's like it's like it's like you you make good bread, right? And I was like sitting. You know what I first heard? Like when my when my aunt's kids were like, you make good bread, right? Like when they came to my place, and I was just like, no, I'm not a fucking baker. Like, what do you mean make good bread? <laughs> like oh what? God, like get yeast Muda. and shit and like make it rise? <laughs> like what the fuck? Like I literally, I'm in my kitchen. I like I I stun lock for like ten seconds, and I'm like. Yeah, I mean, like, you need good flour yeast, and then they cut me off. It's like, no, 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 money, you know, like, papers. And I'm like, Bread. I'm like, all right, you kids need to go home. <laughs> We're like, I'm Ubering you kids home. I don't even care if you get kidnapped at this point. Like, I'm not even bothering to drive you. Fuck that shit. I, but no, like, younger kids do fall into that. Like, we laugh at it because we're adult. Maybe mm -hmm. we laugh at it because we're at a different spot in life. But, like, shit, I, I even seen it amongst, like, my brother's friends. Like, they're, like, just exiting college and they're, like, trying to hustle and grind. And I'm just like, man, I, dude, you know those courses that we laugh at? Like, the fucking... The, the get rich quick shit. I've seen so there many people so many actually buy them. Because people do it. That's why there's people so buy that shit, man. I, people I buy just, it all the time. I wish there was a more more of an emphasis from those people, at the bare minimum, to say, make a legitimate business. Why does it always have to be the drop shipping, NFT, yeah. rug pulling, yeah. scamping? Why don't you say start up a business, do something useful mm -hmm. for the be world, a pro provide a service. Yeah, become learn a trade, start a business yeah. that way create a product, do something like that, and then grow it. Uh, it's it's oh, it's never that. It's always because just... Nobody wants to hear that. Of, it, I think it's the promise of yeah. the get-rich-quick scheme. That's that what it is. Interested in. People Nobody cares about and, and working. Build up a business. Like, what? You're going to go watch some internet course and it's going to say, go to college and apply to law school. What, you really think someone's going to actually pay for well, that course? I feel like a good course would be not to tell people to go to college. That's fine. You uh, you know. Every You're bringing up sneak. Keep, keep the don't go to college. College is a scam aspect. I'm, I'm fine with that. But at least when you're telling people to start their own business and make their own money without having a boss, at least make it in the context of this is going to add value to the world and not just coming up with a rug pull scam yeah. where you're just taking yeah. money off the top and doing nothing except being a leech on society. Uh, I mean, because that's, what's wrong yeah, with that? that takes time, man. That Give takes me all the reasons why I shouldn't do that. Bro, have you heard of affiliate marketing? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard of Akon? So, all right. So, so I know me and Art and saw this, right? But like, um, I don't know if you, Umpy and Nux have seen this, but it's like our, our old pal Boogie, right? Like we all know Boogie2988, lovable yeah. guy on the internet. Have you guys seen some of the most recent videos he's uploaded? This is the kind of shit that absolutely like burns me on the internet. I don't really keep up when, with when him. When you say recent, do you mean yeah. uh, I'm poor? A few days ago. Please give me money? That oh. one? Yes, yes. That I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I don't really keep up with him. It's actively occurring right now. <laughs> Wait, it's still Wait. going on? Oh, yes. He has more than just that? Yeah, he's given oh an exact and a breakdown of all of his finances, how huh. much money he makes and how much money he spends, detailed. Um, no. Muda, do you want me to read Emma? off um, his expenses? And I would get love for you to read off this balance sheet, please. So he lives in like the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. Uh, so this is, to give it some context, he's not in a place that has a high cost of living. His mortgage yeah. is over $2,000 a month, $2,000 and $88. Health insurance is $789. Car payment slash insurance is $600. All his utilities are $550. Internet is $110. Medications are $230. Doctor visits are $150. Loan payments are $288. And he has like a personal handyman type person to fix stuff out at his house that he pays $1,500 a month. So that comes out to $6,300 each month. And... Um, with all of his controversy recently where he made that video saying, I need your help, he was just able to break even for a month off that. This what is my smart thing. Guy. 
this is this is where I sound like I, do I sound like an asshole when I say this? But like audience, you're not responsible for a YouTuber's financial situation ever. You know, like you shouldn't have to donate to anybody or feel compelled to financially support your creator. And that's on them. Like, is that not like is that is that a, is that an unreasonable? They can get have? a job. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, I, I think if I remember correctly, Boogie said in the video he can't get a job because he's like unhealthy and this is the only thing he could do. Something okay, like I'm pretty sure you can get a data entry job on a computer. MetaPC yeah. offered him a job. Oh, oh yeah, they did. God damn. Well, did. anyway, um, that said, I completely agree with you. It's not up to the viewer to feel like they're obligated to support someone that they're watching. Mm hmm. Like, I do get human nature that you want to help someone that's in a bad spot. And I understand the perspective of someone asking if they're in a bad spot. But yeah. to feel obligated is ridiculous. And to be shamed if you don't, you know, watch the video the whole way through and leave a like. Like, they don't have to do anything. Everything they're giving you or watching or being there, that's all out of the goodness of their heart that they want to. I, th I think the biggest thing that I have to wonder about that is... Boogie has admitted that he spent a decent amount of money on things like sugar babies. You go on his his house, he has all these collectibles on the walls, thousands of dollars worth of stuff. What's a sugar baby? Huh? Uh, basically. <laughs> okay, you know sugar daddies? No. What the f so sugar daddies are like, okay, oh. you actually don't know sugar daddies? What the fucking I don't know what you're talking about. Sugar, <laughs> sugar baby, okay, so sugar daddy? Sugar daddy uh, a sugar daddy is like basically a dude that, so it's like a, imagine like a 40 year old dude dating like a 18 year old Oh, girl. oh, I thought it was a, yeah, like, a, like an exactly. item. No, I thought she was like an item. And I was like, there's sugar babies, sugar daddies. I know what you mean. Yeah, like yeah, sugar okay, baby, yeah. like he's got a bunch of, he's got a bunch of lads and lasses. He wants to see a butthole. Thinking of women like items again. God damn! I didn't. I wasn't. I was thinking of. I was thinking of like a little, like a, uh, like a little, uh, you know, Funko Pop. Well, he has a lot of those too. But my, where I was getting at with this is, he spent money on the sugar babies to get these girlfriends. Um, he spent all this money on collectibles, all this stuff. He's made good money in the past on his YouTube channel. I understand he's been through the divorce and things like that too. Bring down well, hold on, just to just to just to ask something here. I saw the video that he made about this, and he's like, even on Good Years, because he was throwing shade at a lot of YouTubers that made more than he did in like a month. Um, but he said that he was like throughout his whole career he was averaging what like seventy thousand dollars a year or some shit. What for his Good Years when he had sponsorships on his videos, and he was averaging like a hundred thousand views per video, and then he was Francis was making money. I. I I can't believe that that's possible. I doubt it. I, I uh, doubt it completely. I no think joke. He, but, I, yeah. I, I, can't, I doubt that he didn't have a six-figure year somewhere in there. My point I was getting at with all this is, how does he not have his house paid off? He lives in Arkansas. He doesn't live in some fancy place. How does he have a $2,000 mortgage? Um, I'm going to have to assume the guy probably dug out like a second mortgage or some shit or like uh, brought equity out of the house maybe. I don't know. <laughs> He, he got $500,000 from the crypto rise last year, and he didn't use that money to pay off the house. It's just, he just went See, all this in is my thing. This is my thing yeah. with crypto, you know, like people who make like $20 million on crypto, it's like, yeah, I just made $20 million. It's rising. I'm cashing out when it's like $2 million, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm already cashed out by then. <laughs> I'm not taking the fucking gamble, so to speak, right? Like I'm cashed out when I know I can cash out. But yeah, it, it was funny because like a year ago, Boogie's like, I made a shit ton of money on crypto. Like he made some smart decisions. And apparently the decisions that he was told by like and, um, some YouTuber that shall not be named, I guess. <laughs> all right. Okay. We, I think all of most of us probably know who he's referring to. Uh, yeah. He lost those Speaking investments. Speaking of random YouTubers, how's Storyfire doing anyway? Oh, I know. It's, it's, it's doing <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, but the but the thing about but the thing about like the crypto stuff too, and it's like book. Here's the thing: like, I, I don't want to sound like a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. Anybody watching? When it comes to crypto, if you're in your 20s, like me or everyone in this call, really, if you're in your 20s, right, early 30s, making and making a crypto investment is not the stupidest thing you can do because you have a lot of years to recoup a loss, right? But when you're 50 years old, you can't. It's like you guys have 401ks, right? Where you're at, right? Like they, they ask you, it's like, do you want to aggressively, you know, invest your 401k or like can be moderate? You can be aggressive in your early twenties if you're starting a 401k, but like when you're his age, your investments have to be so fucking stable and safe. Like that's why I was mentioning like property or whatever. I'm like, you have the money. You had the money at some point to invest in the property. You're suggesting Boogie be a landlord. Wow. This is what, this is what I hate about the internet. Everybody 
fucking has these like fucking preachy yeah. principles that they always act like they would they would fucking stand by. I would never fucking invest money in land. I think it's wrong. Shut the fuck up. If you had the liquid to do it, you would absolutely one thousand percent do it. I have seen so many goddamn fake ass fucking like you know people on the internet who like once they get access to money they're out there buying like supercars and all this bullshit like don't fucking come at me and tell me that you wouldn't buy dumb shit or make in capitalist style investments if you had the money to do so eat my fucking ass right i'm not gonna sit here and pretend that i'm not like in that i would totally be 100 percent mask off fucking capitalist okay in fact that's what i do that's what i am like i'm not i'm unashamedly like that all right simple as that I'm not abusing people out there. I'm not, you know, fucking, there's a far difference between me and like somebody like Elon Musk, all right, or like, fucking, you know, Jeff Bezos, who's like forcing people in his office place to piss in bottles for maximum productivity. But you know what I mean? Like, there's such a key difference in that. And when I see shit like Boogie, where it's like, you know, my landlords, people around here are assholes. I'm like, you don't have to be the asshole. You don't have to be the piece of shit. You can be the good guy. All right. As you claim to be. Anybody can be the good guy. All right. That's up to your moral fiber. Right, like it's it's so fucking insane dealing with any of these f- crazy nut jobs, but yeah, like it, when it comes to like Boogie's whole scenario, he had the money to put away, and like he pissed it away, and he doesn't have a- nobody should be responsible for any of his like financial like issues. You shouldn't have to pay money to somebody because they fucked up. He had the chance. Not many people in the world get the chance to gamble their money away, okay? Or, like, make those big gambles. There's so many people... This is why I hate shit like scams so much, right? Like, a thousand bucks to a lot of us, to all of us here, may not be, like, a crazy... We're not going to cry if we get scammed out of a thousand dollars, right? Like, yeah, it sucks, but we can move on. For most of the living world that lives paycheck to paycheck, a thousand bucks is the difference between being, like, an eating next month or not or like paying something serious off if you are anywhere luxurious enough to throw your money into crypto you're like part of the fucking one percent okay and if you fuck up and make a mistake no one should ever feel bad for yeah. you like it's like it's like you being a dumbass <laughs> um, yeah, i agree to, 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 I'm, I'm with you, man. to play devil's not a devil's advocate but to just mm-hmm. to take i guess it is devil's advocate yeah to, to, to defend boogie would say i'm not asking people to pay for my lifestyle i'm just saying if you have mm-hmm. some extra money I'd appreciate if you gave it to me, um, which is, I, I don't think any of us here are like actually insulting or saying that Boogie did anything wrong. He's in, well, he, he did, did do something wrong. Money, that's fine. He, 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 he yeah, put he all of his savings into that's crypto in the crypto yeah. market. I, I meant, I meant illegal yeah. or no, 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 Boogie is not, he's not doing anything illicit or anything of that nature. He's, I, I think yeah. it's, I think it's just like from an ethics perspective, right? Like, When it comes to YouTubers and and like money, I think it's just a little bit insulting given that like, you know, like a YouTuber like of like 2 million plus subs or something comes out and talks about the financial hardships of life. And it's like, you don't really, you should have enough money saved over to offset whatever financial trouble you might have. Like unless your dumbass isn't paying taxes or you're buying like a McLaren every year, you shouldn't be in dire fucking straits. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like your bank account should be pretty healthy. And it's like, if you're making actual choices to piss away your money, like if you're slicker, who's like been taking money from random individuals and like gambling it away, I have no sympathy for any of your bullshit. Nobody should pay you. You have to dig yourself out of the fucking 30 foot hole that you've dug for yourself. You know what I mean? That's not on anybody else. Now, do I feel bad for Boogie? Yeah, there's like an empathetic component in me where I'm like, yeah, it sucks. He's pretty old now. All right. Like chances are he's not going to be able to get a job given the fact that he's got a criminal record. Yeah. He he pled guilty to that Wait, shooting. Does he, act- does mean, he have a criminal really? record? Yeah, but if if you Google his name, you'll just get those breakdown sheets of every single bad thing Boogie's ever done in his life. Yeah. Um, so, but the thing is, Meta PC did offer him a job. So, like, he does have a job offer out there. I just don't know if that job offer is going to be the sixty five hundred dollars a month he needs to maintain his current lifestyle. Well, no, it, it's not going to be. But like at the end of the day, it's like then you got to downsize like boogies. Like if I was boogie, if I had to be in his shoes, I would sell off the house because I, I don't need the fucking house. First off, like if I if I can't afford or upkeep the house, like the only reason I live in a house now is because it's an investment. You know what I mean? Like a property is always a good investment. That's why. But I don't need a house. Like if it came for me living on my own and I didn't have the money to invest into it, I'd live in a fucking condo just fine. Two rooms. 
like that would be fine for me. You know what I mean? Like a two bedrooms, like a like a standard condo, you know, cheap, efficient. That's yep, all yep. I would need. That's pretty much what, because I, when I think about it, my needs are basically, I have my computer, I have my programming and I have all this stuff right here. Got a place to sleep. Me and the wife, like, fucking, you know, that's all I ever needed. Right. Like not in anything beyond all of that. But like in his situation, he's got a downsize, like his car payment is like 600 fucking bucks a month with insurance. Like, brother, what fucking car are you driving? Like you can get a fucking cheap beater <laughs> and you can get like better insurance for it. I mean, do you need a $1,500 person, uh, an employee? All right. I mean, I get that he has disabilities and it's hard walking around. Maybe that can't be excused, but like shit, you know? Come on now. Even but when it comes to insurance and medication, like what? The thing is, if you're renting a place, then the landlord will take care of that stuff. So you don't need someone to like that maintain true. the house for you. Yeah. Hey, and sometimes you get lucky. Utilities get included in all that shit too. So it's like, in, you know, it's. Dude, what house in Arkansas is that expensive that is mortgage? I don't know. Arkansas is cheap as Arkansas It's so cheap. cheap. His house isn't even yeah. – I've seen his house when Frank Castle walked up to it. It's nothing like super elaborate. It's not like he's living in a mansion or something. He must have gotten the worst deal ever on it. Yeah, he must have got a second mortgage. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah, because even like even if you got a bad deal on a mortgage in that property market, they cannot – it's not It's not going to be great. You know what I mean? Like, prove it if it was that outrageous yeah. of a price. Right. Um, I mean – Yeah, I'll exactly. I'll a mortgage it's calculator like... right now to see – Wow, we're like actual in real time. No, but it makes no sense. I'm so <laughs> fascinated Look, by this. YouTuber try... finances yeah. and how they blow their money is is one of the most peculiar things to me. That's why, like th- that. That's why this podcast is super like important and great to me because like the co-hosts on it are like the most level-headed people I've ever met on YouTube. Hundred okay. percent. Like Nux, I never knew Nux before this podcast, but now it's like this man is way more smarter than the PNG we give him credit <laughs> for. And Oompy, it's like. Oompy brings up urinals and like long fucking barrel guns all the time, but it's like behind the scenes, this man is an actual hustler, smart True. motherfucker. So it's like there's like completely like, it's like I, I think I think the I think the I think the barometer for me is like if I look at you and you're a normal person with or without money, that's that's the kind of person I like to be around. It's like, but when I see Boogie and it's like he's got like thousands of like cards and collectibles and all that shit, it's like you don't really see the maturity there. You know what I mean? Like there, there's a, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a gap in that entire yeah. situation. Yeah. And obviously spending money on sugar babies. It's like that dude, that that's like a, that's like throwing money away at something that like will never show you a return. Like, wow. Yeah. That's bad. You're buying the hookers. The, the sh- sugar babies is essentially like doing drugs or, you know, gambling away your money. It's just, it's in that, uh, it's just, lustful lifestyle that's just gonna suck it all in and you're gonna get nothing out yeah. of it i have pulled up the numbers uh let's say he got the house years ago so we we're at like a three percent interest rate 30-year fixed mortgage let's say the loan amount was two hundred and forty thousand dollars. i don't think the house was even that much that would only be a thousand dollars a month for a mortgage yeah, yeah he so must have got a bad on? deal or like pulled money out yeah, so he, he pulled money out second mortgage yeah, so why did he pull out money for a second mortgage so that he could buy more sugar babies like no 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 so you could put it all in cryptocurrency oh my god that was an investment <laughs> he took a second mortgage as an investment he he was up to five hundred thousand dollars in money from the crypto market and he didn't pull any of it out to pay off his house that and pay off his car was yeah it? you because oh. you can pay your principal off that's sigma grind set no, that's yeah. based as- <laughs> sigma mode but yeah it, it's wild like when you got half a million bucks sitting in liquid you should pull that out and pay off whatever's remaining on your property obviously like can just i don't know dude i i feel like i feel like we're we're like we're <laughs> old men talking about something that yeah. this person should have fucking resolved i don't know I, I think he he keeps taking new mortgages out on his house because he's afraid if he owns it he'd be his own landlord <laughs> that is true. then you then you'd be the hypocrite right there man then, then you'd be out there it's like it's like dsp gaming man like dsp is one of those people where like i just i don't he'll outlive all of us like he will outlast every single person on this call he's the guy 100%. that always cries about, will be long dead he's the guy that cries always. about not getting donations right that's his thing um he has yeah, money quite a bit on his uh streams yeah, he, he does well, it's it's not money. He's asking for um, what is it like uh, engagement? All right, come on now, engagement. Jesus, let's no, not be crass. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, let's. Yeah, it's not. Because he's not I... out there specifically saying. Listen, 
the, if the day comes out where DSP is like, all right, all right, chat, okay, I'm gonna give you guys a form. It, it's gonna, it, it comes with a, it, it comes with a void check. All right, all you have to do is just put this into your bank. It'll just direct deposit the donations to me. Okay, he's not at that point yet, but he's just there saying engagement, super chats. All right, PayPal, all of that, everything is out yeah, that's there. That's donations. That's not and engagement. Okay, it's not. This is this is always the other cringy thing that I find with some of these like content creators that try to be holier than thou when it comes to money. Right, like DSP will be like. I'm not like the other rich YouTuber that's like, you know, fucking making hand, money hand over fist. I'm just the average guy. I'm like, the average guy doesn't make a hundred grand a year, first off. All right, let's just fucking put that out there. The other thing is, okay, you're getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. What the fuck are you doing? Where does your content suffice all that? You know what I mean? Like, I look at DSP, and it's a perfect example of the boogie thing. He doesn't need the big house. Downsize and move to a fucking apartment, okay? Done. What are you doing? You're just sitting there playing video games in a room, all right? That might as well be your office. Play your video games, call it a day, be out. You don't have to fucking burn money. Dude, at that point, you don't even need a fucking car, you know? Like, True. <laughs> like, you barely leave the house anyways. Who gives yeah. a shit? It's, it's insanity to me. It's like some people have such poor financial decisions, and they pass that off to the community as if the community should have sympathy for it. And you know what? Even if they're not outright asking for money... There is that parasocial relationship that they know they're taking advantage of, you know, like I don't have to go in there and ask for money. But if I uploaded a video tomorrow and said, guys, I'm in like really big trouble. Um, I'm not saying you guys should give me money. That would be wrong. But I mean, if I don't get any payments, I could be kicked out of my house. I could not be able to eat, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. No pressure, the, but the, yeah, the, uh, just it's <laughs> all over for me. <laughs> Beyond the ethical level of, like, feeling that your audience is required to pay for your lifestyle, I also just don't think it's an effective way of making the most money off a YouTube channel is saying, like, hey, I really need it. I see this happen on uh, on uh, Twitter a lot because Twitter, you don't really make money off it. But you have these people on there that have, you know, 20,000 followers complaining about politics. And they're like, oh, mm -hmm. my car broke down and this happened. Can you throw me some money on PayPal? It's like the equivalent there where – you know, it's not sustainable. It's not a business model that you're going to be able to okay, um, keep no, on so, paying for your bills with. I'm looking at realtor.com houses in Arkansas. Because <laughs> I'm just curious now. God damn it. For $100,000, nope. you can get an acre. Here, here's $90,000 for 1.75 acres. What the f Okay, so obviously God that's not directly in the middle of the city, but like even if you look at the middle of the city, it's still three hundred thousand dollars for an acre. Like, or like, yeah. This, I don't, I don't understand how. Like, even if you bought the house today with a thirty with a ten year mortgage, how are you paying two thousand dollars a month? I I, th I think that's uh, we got to have like Graham Stefan or like a fucking realtor YouTuber on and discuss the math. I'm just looking at this like the yeah. This dude, this might I'm actually be an internet mystery. How the f is that mortgage payment <laughs> so bad? Can I just look at it? How I'm going to guess that house was like 170 at the most. Like let's say it was a new construction area. Mm -hmm. uh, and like he paid top dollar for it more than he should have at the time because this he bought that house he didn't years do he ago. didn't do the muda strat where he waited six months for the guy to lose his investment <laughs> dude it took me three years to get the house i i currently live in yeah. person passed away and i was talking to the family members for two years before i was able to buy it it's like <laughs> there, there, there's so many ways of getting a deal on a house oh my god but um how, how did he die? All right. The how woman did he die? Died how, did he, how did he pass away? Murder, how did he die? Brain force trauma to the head. Oh, Crack. No, she, <laughs> Crack. <laughs> she had medical problems, but I told her I really liked the house when she was still alive. Oh. And then she passed away, and uh, she kind of told the family. She had medical she problems and aren't so. voted for assisted suicide. And I, I, I always like that. <laughs> that was cute. That was, that was good. That's, that's a that, story that's for another day. More. But yeah, even yeah. if he made, I'm just, I think what we're getting at is even if he made the worst home buying decision he just paid top dollar in the arkansas real estate market well, of 2012 when he purchased that place i just can't imagine how the mortgage would be so high it just doesn't add up yeah. I, I would have to imagine like, I, every I, mean, I think i even talked to keem about this whole thing too and i'm like it just it's a baffling scenario it is literally an internet mystery it is like just i don't i don't get how somebody can get into it it's like you know, there's three people on the internet, okay? Three people on the internet that, like, are the lightning rod for, you know, just a massive community of people to, like, just constantly berate. There's 
Boogie, DSP, and Wings of Redemption. And that, those are the three people that I have seen. Chris, well, Chris Chan is in, Christine Chandler is oh, in prison now. Yeah, you've, yeah, yeah. What the Chris yeah. Chan still works as Chris an abbreviation. <laughs> she told me. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Chris Chan is in prison right now. All right. Like, actually, wait, when are they releasing? I don't know. I told I'm, you I'm coming down to Virginia to, to, <laughs> yeah, to pick her up. Yeah, you're coming with me. Um, we we got to figure that one out. Uh, <laughs> I, you I, want I, me to drive all the way down to Virginia? It's going to be a long thing, but we'll pick her up. I'm pretty sure you'll cut <laughs> right through Pennsylvania, so you, you could just draw, come by my house, then we could uh, do That's the, like a nine-hour uh, drive, ten-hour drive. Trip. Let's do it. Okay, Anything. you got. we got to solidify the day, because we got to pick her up together. I'll, we'll make a whole fun adventure out of it, shit. It'll be, it was, it'll be a good time. Do but you know yeah, when she's releasing? What was that? You've been follow- Do you know when she's releasing? You've been following up on her, right? Like I haven't followed up r- in the past month or so. I'll have to f- look again. Uh, the Kiwi Farms have been erratic in their their live uh, schedule Capture when they're it. actually online. So I'll have to check what they're, ta- what they're talking about there. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be wild to 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 see because I, I think what's happening is like they have to go to trial, get a uh, sentenced, and but I think the I think how it, it works in the U.S. is like they take the um uh, the time you've served as part of the sentence. Yeah. So yes. Like if yes. they give you a year, and then they they're like, oh, you have to be a year in prison. They'll just walk out because they've already you know served a whole year. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing is with uh, Chris Chan, there's all these stories about the finances and Bob leaving them hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars. And it was all blown through very quickly um, with like the loss uh, fighting the, tr- uh, the charges against Christine for the GameStop incident and him running up over the game store owner with his car. And uh, what? Oh, you don't know that? I didn't know about this. Oh, oh brother. No. Conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. There's too many of them. Well, mine's only five hours long <laughs> compared to Gino's, which is like 60. Only five hours Gino's long. Gino's Samuels is 60 review. hours long. I think mine I is... I bet if Quentin Reviews made it, it would be too long to upload on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up in my recommendeds the other day, and I was like, I wanted to watch a Quentin Review video, but I'm like, man, this is just way too fucking long. <laughs> like, I'm sure he put a... Like, it was like the perfume. He was like, no, 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 bro. I'm sure you mean a lot, but I ain't reading all of that. Like it was just a lot. I don't know. I don't know how this and that the analysis game on YouTube just somehow got to just really long videos. My friend, uh, hiding in public, he made a 16-hour review on Persona Four. How, how many views? Like, how do we? How do they how do many it? Views they get? I don't know. It's. Uh, I think. It, I, I don't know. I mean, I could explain well, like, to you why those videos do so well. People just leave. Yeah, the their... watch time is insanely high. People just leave. You the same person watching monitor. it multiple times. Well, it's not times. just watch times insanely high. It's relative watch time. So when you make a really, yeah. if you make a a really well edited ten minute long video, you're fighting against a lot of other really well edited ten minute long videos. And YouTube compares watch time with other videos the same length as yours. If you make a super mm-hmm. long, well edited, scripted video, you're now competing with podcasts and improvised content that doesn't have as good of a watch time. So you're just going to, by default, have a higher relative watch time compared to the competition in that uh, time length. So because of that, they boop, go up. Is there a relative yeah. watch time compared to 16-hour long videos? Yeah, yeah. If you make a 16-hour long video, YouTube compares it to all the other 16-hour long probably videos? probably be like Christian broadcasts of some like two-day Bible service or something. Like You're just going to get stuff... <laughs> You're going to get stuff with like such a terrible audience engagement level that you'll be in the top 1% of videos with the relative watch time as that. So it, you'll just get tons of views if yours is half decent. So yeah, if you want to get a lot of views on YouTube, the way to do it most easily is just to make really long scripted videos. Oh, yeah, even if they're like 30 minutes long, well, they usually do pretty well, 30 yeah. to 35 minutes. Yeah. He posted it on his second channel with... 20,000 subscribers and it got 60,000 views. I guess that's pretty good. That's pretty nice for a channel like that, yeah. No, that's pretty solid. Yeah, no, th- like when I'm when I'm looking through like all the fucking when I'm looking through like all the uh, content on the internet, like when I'm looking through the just uh, in terms of highly produced stuff, um when it comes to gaming videos, I think the most successful that I've seen are like four or five eight hour reviews of like Death Stranding and shit like that. When I made a four hour review of like yeah. Metal Gear Solid, it like tanked the first day, obviously, like it, it you know, it, it, those are 10 out of 10 videos and, you know, whatever. But then, like, a week or two later, the algorithm's like, woo, okay, send off, sure, go off, King. And I was like, all right, cool, that's nice to see. Um, but, yeah, let's, and it could be, like, really any topic. Like, you could even have the most hyper-focused topic in the world. Um, 
but that's pretty much how it works. Like in a couple days, I want to make a video on G4 TV and how it like came back to life and then died after a whole year again. And I'm sure that'll do just fine, given the fact that, you know, these videos tend to just be super duper long in comparison to like, you know, a standard shit post, if you will. But yeah, Arx Wright, if that's if if you wanna if you wanna achieve the, the view meta on YouTube, just like sixteen hour long fucking videos, because you are right, you're competing with, you know, Christian broadcast service that's just going on day to day. It's a wild world, man. YouTube YouTube is a YouTube well, is a pit. <laughs> time to start making sixteen hour long reviews. You don't have to go well, sixteen. Well, would you... you, you uh, Moodus, I think Moodus right on the money. Over thirty minutes long is kind of yeah. where it's at. Um, if you get to that yeah, hour mark, sure. the problem is it takes yeah. so much extra work because you know it takes six oh, times yeah. the amount of effort right. to make an hour long video over a ten minute long video. So yeah. is it worth it what just to make about? six ten minute long videos even if each one doesn't get as many views? Then you kind of have to factor that in. It's it's all about what you're going for. What are you talking about? Sixty minute videos take sixty minutes to produce. That's oh, what I read on I, YouTube comments. I forgot, of course, I forgot what that's the, what that's the comments say. Yeah, Jesus Christ, man! That... Oh my God, I don't know now. What the hell? <laughs> Dude, tw Twitch streaming itself is its own. Did you guys see XQC? Apparently, like, fucking his like girlfriend came out and she has like the registration to his like McLaren or something for this McLaren. Yeah. For his, yes, I saw I, that. I, felt I like, knew you were going to bring I, that up at some point. I fell, I fell for the out of context meme. I think she was literally just talking about like driving the car. I don't think she believes she owns it. But you know, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't think so. Why the fuck would you buy a supercar if you don't have a license? <laughs> like, I think Cardi B does that. I think Cardi B has like she all these have... cars and doesn't drive. But this doesn't make any sense to me. How hard is it to just get a license? Bro, at that point, get yourself some sugar babies. Come on. <laughs> no, but it's like, no, think about it like this. It's like, okay, how long did it take for you guys to get your driver's license? I was 18. It took a year because I 18. got, I did like the driving test. I failed the test. But I, mean, like... I just drove with my learner's permit for like five years. <laughs> nobody, pulled um... you, no, nobody pulled you over. No. Uh -uh. See, see, like, but like, okay, how how hard is a driving test? You just go in, you do you do, you do basic shit, and you pass, right? I, I don't know, twice. man. It, you're in Canada; it, it's brutal here. It, it, Canada's rough. But, you know, I, in the U.S., it's well, super the easy. The problem with the U.S. is there's like a six week wait in between each time you do it because they're so backed up. At least where I live, so I mm -hmm. take it. I like accidentally screw up the parallel parking. Then I'd have to reapply, but then it would take another month and a half, two months to be even able to get in again to do it again. And then my nerves are so high oh, because, oh, if I screw up one little thing, I'm going to have to wait another two months to get my license. Then I screwed up again. So that mm -hmm. was kind of uh, the, the issue there. That That's why, like, usually over here in Canada, to avoid that, I always, like, drive two hours up north just to get a test done because they don't even have highways where they're at, okay? So it's like you just drive on the main road and they treat it like a highway. Actually, speaking of parallel parking, I literally nearly rear-ended a car. Uh, not rear-ended, but, like, I hit the front bumper of it almost, and they still passed me. And it's it's funny how they passed me because, like, I was chatting up the fucking uh, instructor all the time. And like, so I, I, I was parallel parking the right way. Like I was doing all the right motions, except I almost hit the car. I stopped beforehand, you know what I mean? I was like, I'm not going to do it. And uh, she's like, I'll let you pass because I know you drive a you know Mustang and they're usually longer. I'm like, yeah, 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 sure. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Cool. Great. Goodbye. Well, they didn't even ask me to do parallel parking, honestly. Yeah. They, um, for me, it was like parking in a parking lot. And I was like, oh, okay. Wow. I mean, I guess I'll do this um, basic activity. Although... Sure. <laughs> Yeah, so um, for me, what was crazy, yeah, I don't know if uh, in Ontario it's the same. Do, do you have, like, the, the theory test, the massive theory test that's, like, three separate sections? Yeah, they do. They ask you. It's like, like 32 questions. Would you? The stupidest question. It's like, before planning a trip, which one of these are the most important thing to have in mind? To make sure that there's a fuel stop on the way, to overestimate your time of arrival, to make sure that your seatbelt is fastened, or to make sure that if you're too tired, you'll have a place to stop in middle. And the correct answer is over. Don't overestimate your time of arrival. Was the correct answer. I thought it would be like, the seatbelt. What yeah, the? Heck? I thought that was like a, a, a boring. <laughs> no, no. Seatbelt is obvious. <laughs> seatbelt is obvious. No, no, no. It's. And the, another one, they show you like a picture where they put like numbers on different things, different parts of the picture, and they tell you what's wrong with this picture. And for me, uh, one of my mistakes was the dog wasn't wearing his seatbelt. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> so know. one thing one thing i learned because of because of the bill c11 in canada where i was talking about leaving the country and like moving to the states just because you know but yeah. I, well i was always talking about leaving to the states i found out my audience does not like the state of california i found out most audiences on youtube just fucking hate that state everyone has painted it out like it's matt fucking max dude yeah ever, even people in california always Damn. trash it and you know what they're right they got the weather that's, absolutely that's about it yeah, but Texas has the weather too. No, no, California no. has that steady <laughs> level weather next to the the coast, where it's just like, you know, San Diego. It's seventy degrees all year round. Texas has yeah. really hot summers. Yeah, it's like one hundred and twenty for eight months of the year. It seems like. I don't know, man. Texas. Yeah. I I just like Texas because I can fire guns all I want and fucking live on the land like a normal. And we can. Did you see my last video? No, I didn't see your last video, dude. I shot a uh, an M two like a Modus, like the old school fifties. Like the truck mounted ones. What? I bought one. What? Damn. Yeah, I have. I have. We have a. Uh, I have like a belt fed fifty caliber machine gun now. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, how the f does the registration yeah. on that shit work? Like, <laughs> it's it's semi automatic, so it's the, just a rifle. It's just a simple. It took. I bought it and it walked out the door in like eight seconds because I have a perfect record. Mm -hmm. So like my my background checks come back, and I'm also on the NFA registered list, so I have to like. I have to communicate with the ATF on like a monthly basis, basically. So whenever I go buy a gun, it's like instantaneous. I can just go buy one and, because I'm like a and like they're watching me like a hawk. So so how do you how yeah. do you explain it, that to the ATF? It's like they're just like, why do you have a fifty fucking cal machine gun that you bought? I showed them the videos. They see it. Oh, well, they're yeah, it's you a can, tax right now. Yeah, you can like they they ask you for like context as to why you need so much stuff, and it's just like I just make make videos. I have no. Nothing beyond that. So you're, they're, they're, you're just like I'm, I'm FPS Russia, but except without the accent and Texan. <laughs> I do not mention FPS well, Russia because no. <laughs> he he combined uh, controlled substances with uh, illegal or, or controlled firearms. He which can't is a terrible. He idea. can't own I, guns anymore. Yeah, no. he's a felon. Yeah. Well, not only that, across the, guy, the whole U.S., his gun hookup yeah. was murdered, and then he was thrown in prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember could. that. Wait, so when you're a felon like that, you can't just buy a gun throughout the entire U.S., yeah? It's like you're no federally blocked? No, you can't buy a gun when you're a felon. When you're a felon, you lose your right to vote and to yeah. uh, use a firearm. Firearms. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so so what? Like, what was the thing? He just had, like, marijuana. I think it was marijuana that he was on, yeah, the whole time? Yeah, was in Georgia, he had, ah. it, he had, like, an illegal amount of uh, of pot. I think the reason that they, they, they just, like, come in sometimes and they want to count all your stuff. Um, but he had a few run-ins with them, I believe, before. Um, the big, the big shebang, the big moment in which he had too much, too much weed, mm -hmm. uh, and like they something about like a suppressor or something like that, because he has a lot of NFA items. If you have any suppressors, are extremely closely monitored by the ATF. Like you can't, you can't go. Technically, you shouldn't leave it. Uh, you shouldn't take it from your home. The address in which it's stored, it should never leave. If it does, you need the tax stamp with you. Um, if you don't have your tax stamp, you can get in trouble. Uh, if you don't file a 520 or a, a 5020, there's some kind of notice. You have to tell them in which dates the suppressor, the serial number will be in transport away from the original address. So they know they need to know at every moment where everything is. Damn. Well, so like, it's very, very, very well uh, and, regulated. And also it's like, oh, oh. Uh, owning that is just a hassle. Then. Yeah. They're yeah at, they were is, yeah. definitely after him. They, uh, they were following him around, seeing what they could get him on. And when they did catch mm -hmm. him getting mm -hmm. a little bit of weed in the mail, they threw the book at him because they went into the, his house and then they saw that uh, some of his guns were painted. And it was a little hard to make out the ID number on one of the guns. And they said, oh, you're obstructing mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah, serial the serial number, number on shit. it, which is like a, a minimum like five or ten year sentence. Um, yeah. So they yeah. were going to try to throw that at him if he fought it. And also because they found a text message between him and his girlfriend where he's like, hey, you want to come over and smoke some weed? They said that was intent to distribute the marijuana. So now he's a drug mm -hmm. dealer, not just a drug user. So, yeah. Yeah. They, what? They, they, yeah. Got no. so yeah. Good. they try so hard. Yeah. That, it's good to have a good relationship with him. They didn't just throw the f***ing book at him. They like <laughs> – they like. <laughs> yeah, he should have offered them weed. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. Well, to this very no, day, it's... they still don't know who killed his uh, his a business associate who was getting him the guns. Alex Jones, mm -hmm. back in the day, there's a clip where he was like accusing the ATF of murdering him. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy, dude. Alex is awesome. I can't wait for him to be dude, back what's... on Twitter. Uh, true. Wasn't he? Uh, 
what what was it? How much was he sued for? He was sued oh, for like a trillion dollars. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, Wait, like who was sued for two point seven five trillion? <laughs> Alex Jones. Alex oh my Jones. God, yeah. Wait, that didn't. No, 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 no. But did it got updated? No, because the settlement was one billion, right? Did it get upgraded? It's too, it's now they're trying to go back okay. for two point five, two point seven five trillion. At some point, you gotta just I mean, laugh that, and say like he's not. At that point, it's just comical. Yeah, he's just gonna go bankrupt. <laughs> he can't. If, that's not possible. If I if I was sued for two point, if I honestly, if like a judge came up and gave me the two point seventy five trillion dollar judgment, I'd just leave the country. No, you I'd just go gone. bankrupt. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd, I'd sneak my way to Mexico and fly out to like Asia or something and just start a whole new life I'm like garnish me now <laughs> like what the f I, I just uh, the Alex Jones stuff is like it, there's like obviously like the whole you know the, the whole reason he got sued was because of some really serious statements that he was making but it's just like the 2.75 trillion it's like man are you just like at that point it's, it's, it's not even sending a message it's just like you just made a joke. <laughs> like, yeah. The Alex Jones stuff, he's just going to keep on filming. Like, even if he goes bankrupt and he loses his facility, all he needs is a, yeah, he, he just needs what we have, a, a webcam, a microphone and an internet connection. They might go after his internet connection. So he doesn't. So the, the, the providers probably will take that away from him at some point. Yeah, true. But as long as he has some sort of hookup to the internet, Lord VPN. Yeah, he'll he'll be able to stream to his audience. This is Alex Jones from the local Starbucks. I was just thinking <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. It's uh yeah, Alex Jones is an interesting one. I remember I was I started listening yeah. to him ironically when I was just a teenager, just because I thought he was funny, like hearing him ramble. And I, I remember for years he just ramble on, oh, this Jeffrey Epstein guy, but billionaires are going on his plane and they're like molesting, you know, minors and stuff, just rambling out about this. I'm like, what a crazy guy. And then all that Epstein yeah. stuff came out and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> what is – if that was right, and that was one of the craziest things he was saying, you know, what other things uh, was he right about? Uh That kind of woke me up. I mean, it, it, like the thing is like fucking some of this shit – it's like some of the stuff he says, like, there's a lot of stuff where there's like a nugget of truth to it, but he over like embellishes it so hard or like he, he like that, that it just, it takes it away, you know, like it takes I, away. From I agree. The, but with the, the, Ep with the Epstein stuff, there was no embellishing it. Everything he said no. was said was a hundred percent true. It was just was as it, outrageous as he said it was. But did people kind of have like a little suspicion on Epstein though? Leading he was up to already his... arrested, and then he got out of yeah. prison. Someone bailed him out and gave him some good sentence, so he never he didn't have to serve a sentence. I, I forget the exact details. I know that he was in Florida serving a sentence, and a sentence was a joke because he could like come in and out of that Florida prison all the time that he wanted. He just I think the only stipulation was like just sleep here tonight, so we can we can pretend we have you incarcerated. <laughs> and then that was about. Well, it. you have it to like... think he was he was going on private jet with like the former president of the united states and you know, the mm -hmm. politicians from other countries and royal families uh you know he just he was so well connected he probably had ends to just give him a cushy deal where someone made a phone call and made it happen yeah i mean it's uh it's i don't know alex jones did he to kill me, himself you yeah. think uh no does anyone no, believe he killed himself i guess besides like main this mainstream media will peddle that yeah, I don't even think mainstream media believes that. That's true. Like, I remember 60 Minutes came out with a report where they were questioning the entire story and saying, hey, this is kind of suspicious. 60 Minutes is yeah. pretty interesting. They've had the, like an interesting track record of kind of... Do you think YouTube would... Walk, towing the line of being yeah. mainstream, you know, and not having like yeah. the... They question some stuff. It's pretty cool. I like 60 Minutes. Do you Minutes. think YouTube would strike a channel if they said Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself? I don't think... I feel like even YouTube accepts that as... Uh, there yeah. has been channels that have been taken down yeah. talking about the Epstein coverage, but it's not talking about Epstein. It's about people that are trying to piece together the other billionaires and celebrities that were connected mm -hmm. with Epstein. When you start trying to piece together who yeah. he was friends with, yeah, that that's where they'll delete your account. Yeah, because unless you have, like, definitive proof on yeah. that... Like, yeah, proof mm -hmm. on Epstein. Epstein and Maxwell yeah. are fair game to talk about and, like, talk about their victims, but the, any any time that you try to piece together any of the other uh, famous people or powerful people that were around it, that's when your channel will get axed. Would YouTube ax your channel if, like, you made an actual proper link through investigative journalism? You actually linked a billionaire? Do you think yeah. YouTube would store a Absolutely. movie? Absolutely. Probably. It, it yeah, just came I, I out that so the too. FBI yeah. was working with these social media platforms to say, hey, take down this creator and they'll do it. Brother, all of the DHS. Not just the FBI. Well, I, this... <laughs> you had, like, CISA. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> 
I mean, that's just been a joke for years that, uh, you know, you don't talk about the Vega shooter on YouTube or you get your channel deleted. Like, that's just a running yeah. joke between YouTubers. No, like, with when it was... That, yeah, that's not a joke. That was actually a really, like, good point where we were talking about, like, the FBI is, like, working with, like, YouTubers. It's This is the thing, like, if you followed anything in, like, the privacy game, like, you know that, like, all these social media networks already backdoor to, like, the NSA and all these agencies anyways. So it's like, the shit doesn't, doesn't come off as a surprise. But I think where, like, the point is, and we were talking about Twitter earlier with, like, at the beginning of this episode, we were talking about Elon and, like, the whole $8 and, like, banning and everything, right? Um, I think we talked about banning before we started filming. But uh, when it comes to um, services, when it comes to, like, these companies backdooring, at what point is it still a private company, you know? At what point is Twitter like, oh, they banned you? Oh, the private company can choose what they want. Yeah, it's true. It's a private company, but... I mean, they're pretty fucking in bed with the state at this point. So, like, what's the real difference, you know? Well, I, that's also the point is, well, the, the the government's just making recommendations to them to do things. But it's like, yeah, mm. but Google is asking the government for laws to be passed or not be passed in favor of them. So, of course, they're going to play ball when the government comes and says, do something for us because they want favorable outcomes from the government. So they don't have to pay as much in taxes and they don't have yeah. any regulation over them. So it, it's it's one of these things where it's just so disingenuous at this point to like say, oh, well, it's a private platform. They could do whatever they want. It's it, it's not. Well, it's like it's like if you think about it, Facebook, right? Like, yeah, Facebook's a private platform. They could remove you whenever they want off of their service. But then think about it like this, right? Like they always have like this dagger over the head from the government where like they want to they could get broken up. Right. Like Facebook's biggest fear is like, oh, shit, we have to break up WhatsApp, Instagram and all of our divisions into different companies. Right. Like if they're going to. So it's like, hey, we play ball. We take their recommendations and we ban whoever we need to ban. Otherwise, you know, the next day they could absolutely chop us up into pieces and kill all of our fortune. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like it's literally the perfect case of please keep scratching my back. I'll keep scratching yours. And there's there's no difference anymore. There's like we went from we remember back like years ago it was wild when there was like uh, I, f I forgot what I think it was the San Bernardino uh case but like mm -hmm. the fbi and apple went into a fucking public spat over this right like apple was not willing to unlock a phone for the fbi period and they still have not um, Tim Cook. yeah and and like what happened was the federal bureau had to go out to i believe an israeli company like an actual hacker company and find a way to break apple's encryption and all of their security so at that point the fbi had to work with the bad guys in order to fucking do what they wanted they couldn't directly work with the company Nowadays, there's no doubt in my mind that Apple will probably just give whatever they need to to the feds or any agency out there behind the scenes. They won't tell you straight up publicly. They might even publicly beef again, but behind the scenes, it's all fair game. So a lot of these agencies that once were private have so much state involvement that like I don't see them too different from like, you know, the the Chinese companies that we talk about all the time, like Tencent, like, oh, they're owned by the Chinese government, like yeah, they're not owned by the U.S. government here, but they sure as fuck have a lot of influence, like more than they probably should have. You know, I find so. it interesting that in recent years, Apple and Microsoft were considered the evil big tech conglomerates, but now they're actually probably the least problematic out of any of them. Like mm -hmm. recently, Apple came out and said, you have the option to not allow Facebook to track your, your movements and stuff so they could give tailored ads to you. And that like so they become a huge like privacy focused company and i kind of appreciate i that. respect yeah. microsoft and apple for that i i grew up as a teenager despising apple just like i jumped on that bandwagon of saying like oh it's just a waste of money mm -hmm. they overcharge for stuff but at this point i've been using a google pixel i talked to a person that worked at youtube and the people that work at youtube and google they use iphones yeah like i'm using the google mm -hmm. pixel phone meanwhile these people that are working at google they're using the iphones like what do they know <laughs> Well, it's like Mark Zuckerberg, right? Remember, like, the dude puts tape on his, like, uh, laptop webcam all the time. Dude, if Mark is doing that, there's a fucking pretty good reason why Mark Zuckerberg is blocking all of his shit. Because he knows just what he's doing to other, you know, and vice versa. When I look at, like, Apple phones, I, I got, like, the overcharging kind of makes sense to me now. Because I think about it like this, right? Like, if you buy a cheapo phone from one manufacturer, like, if you buy a $300 phone, and it's a good phone. Right. But 300 bucks, you're ob they're obviously losing money on it, obviously. But then they're probably making money selling your data or like spying on you. If Apple's charging you like two grand for a phone, that's a lot of money. 
But when you pay the two grand, it's like you understand that you're just buying the product from them. You're using some of their services and they can afford to offer you all that privacy shit, which I think is really important in today's day and age, man. Like every app, it's like it's funny because you read the privacy policies and all these things like for TikTok and and Twitter and Facebook and, and YouTube and Google and whatever. And you're like. They're not they're not taking your name, but they're taking all the other 99 factors in your device and your house and everything. And they've already fingerprinted you like crazy. And it's funny because people are like, I have nothing to hide. But I'm like, you know, it's weird when like your car's tracking what you're doing and how you're driving and reporting that to their friends of the insurance companies and all of that shit. Like, it's just super weird to me, you know? Like all of that stuff factored together, these companies having like excessive control with the government. I don't know. It just, we live in a really weird time these days where like privacy is kind of like an insane luxury to have or like, you know, just, I don't know, not being tracked or whatever. Uh, I sound paranoid. Yeah. I, I, I've pretty much come to grips with the fact that everyone knows who I am on the computer, on the internet, like the big companies. I just don't want the random people to like know my identity. But at this point, I'm pretty confident every Apple, you, it, yeah. no, they know exactly I was wondering, does that weird you out? Does that name, freak you out, though? I, like, you're such a private person. <laughs> Truth is not really. Yeah. I am, and um, I, I value my privacy. But I'm not worried about it because I feel like they're in a worse position if they... They're, they're not going to... No, no, me, they're not. But, like, right? are you scared that they're... Because they're, they're going to make believe they don't scan my stuff. But That's are you ever scared, field. like, what happens if, like, one of these big companies get breached really heavily one day and then, like, they just come out with everyone's contact yeah. information? Like, what and, if like, Russia hacked into the yeah. U.S. government's database of all these... Everyone's information and all all their user profiles? And then that was leaked online. Like, any naked picture someone took and then posted I on the cloud, that like, all of that got just for, was at the right. fingertips of Vladimir Putin. Because no. they hacked into the the security system, I'd love that. that. Would suck for everyone, and, chaos. and I would not love that. <laughs> I would love it. Yeah, I mean, I would fucking, I would kill to see that. Like, like the thing about it, like it's it's one of those scenarios where like I see data breaches all the time, and I'm like, yo, a lot of my stuff, like I'd be weirded out if like a lot of my really private stuff was leaked out. But I'm like, man, Nux has never shown his face to anyone, not even us. So, like, so. I actually, I don't have my face okay. on the internet at all. Like, I never had a Facebook profile picture or any of it. Like, I was really good about it. You kept that shit completely hidden? Me too. Shut the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> Fans didn't just come to my door last night because they know where I live it's now. Me. Wait, really? You had people show up to your place? Yeah, that didn't happen. Well, they were trick-or-treating. That's me and okay. Caleb. Okay, well, yeah. Last night wasn't Halloween. Well, oh, wait, but, it was a day yeah. late, maybe. <laughs> it's Umpaville fans, okay? They were a little late. It's Whatever. happened a few times you now. What do you do when they come up to your door? Do you, like, scare them off? Do you bring out uh, the long barrel gun? No, I answered. They're all, they're all like, you know, like, maybe 18 to 20 years old. They just seem really nice. They're all yeah. really nice. I don't really care. Yeah. I c encourage it to not happen, but... Yeah, that's one thing where, like, if somebody showed up, it's like, for be it. nice, but, like, god damn, just don't show up to somebody's house uninvited. Yeah. Like, what the... I'm asking for it, you know. I'm a, I'm a person on the internet. I got public public uh, presence. Caleb, what would you do if uh, Frank Castle showed up at your door with a GoPro on his head? Uh, I don't know. I would know it's Frank uh, Frank Castle, and I would try to get some would good you content. Shoot off out of a it. warning shot. Nah, bro. You know, Caleb would take out <laughs> no. a gun. And... <laughs> I, well, my uh, my M2 is pointed at the door, so I would just open both of my doors, and then I would just sit back and mount up, and then tell him to come on in. Oh, you you you'd, you'd invoke yeah. the hassle doctrine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I would not. I would invite him in. That'd be awesome. That'd be so funny. No, Frank, I feel like okay. So again, back to the boogie thing. Frank Castle showed up to your house. It's like you got to understand. It's like this is a troll. Like invite him in, have a beer, yeah. and like laugh it off. You know? Yeah, that would be. I mean, yeah, that would be just. It's content, I've, right? That's what I've I thought would, yeah. about this. I wouldn't answer the door, Frank. Like because this was this was like a big thing. What would you do if Frank Castle came to your door when Boogie got uh, confronted? And if he came to my house, I would not answer it. But if like he. He fought, he like approached me somewhere in public at that point, I would say, okay, like let's go to a restaurant and eat or something. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 yeah something like that. Like, True. it's like, you don't have to answer the door if he's there, he's going to look like a total dumbass. But like, yeah, if you're out there, it's like, yeah, let's just go, let's go get some food or, you know, it's, it's like the, it's like Hassan, when we saw him at TwitchCon, like everyone would go up to him and ask him about like, uh, was Sam Hyde? And I was just Sam like, Hyde. the candy man. I was thinking the same thing. You could literally destroy them by ignoring them. Yeah. It is, 
it's the biggest slap in the face on the internet. If they would have gone up to Hassan and they would have said, yo, Hassan, what about this Sam Hyde dude? And he would have just said, who? It would have been I over. feel like my brother would be great at TwitchCon because my brother has no idea about any popular personalities or figures, right? Like, I'll tell him, like, because he knows that I'll, like, he knows that I YouTube and, like, he knows that, like, I have, like, a fucking podcast thing and I invited somebody and I'm like, dude, do you know we got, like, I told him, like, you know we had Hassan on? He's like, who? Like, who? Like, he always does the who when it comes to everyone. I'm like, who? Like, who did you bring on? Like, he, he's, he just keeps asking. It's like, he would be perfect over there because he would, like, absolutely dash whatever egos built up off of any streamer and shit or, like, YouTuber or anything of that nature. But you're right. Like, all, all Hassan had to do was literally go, like, who is he again? Like, what's going on? Or just not acknowledge, period. And that's a win right there. It's like getting mad at somebody over the internet. Like, it's like the same thing with the... <clears throat> the idubs thing right like when idubs was getting shit on for like him and his girlfriend it's like you know you don't even have to acknowledge anyone you can just kind of move on with your life and people will forget it like had he not acknowledged mm -hmm. the whole thing would have been dead within like a few days because <clears throat> most normal people didn't fucking care the only people that cared were like the super parasocially attached just don't pay attention to it be done like it's over because <laughs> they're not going to watch you they're not going to stick around they're just there to get reactions out of you done simple as that who gives a fuck yeah but uh that's that's pretty much yeah. what we go on with in life yeah interesting thing is frank castle yeah. um, after the boogie incident said he was going to dsp dsp's house and dsp handled it really well he just said He's not allowed to come here. If he does, um, I'm not going to answer the door and I'm going to call the police. Didn't engage him publicly, just said like that once on a live stream when people were saying it to him. And Frank no. Castle never came to his house because it's not worth taking a flight across the country just for someone not to answer the door. Yeah, I mean, that that's what I would do. It's like my thing is like if somebody out there is like, I'm going to go to Muda's house and like fucking – take a shit on the doorstep or like bang on the door and like not answer it just you literally call the police it's what you pay taxes for anyways like you deal with that fucking nuisance not me yeah i would, yeah, I would call yeah. It. Yeah. it's like i'm not going to respond there with a firearm and make myself look like a fucking you know dumbass in front of like the internet like when boogie came out and shot the gun in the air that was the only that was like the death knell it was like bro you, nobody can side with you like i couldn't side with them on that because i'm like you just made all gun owners look like absolute fucking dipshits by doing that and, and and it's also like he's not a bro, gun how long have you been on the internet oh yeah it was like his friends it was roommates revolvers, roommates which uh isn't that, isn't that like really wouldn't that be like screwing over your roommate pretty hard by using their firearm like that Boompy? um what's the law on that <laughs> like if i just took your gun <laughs> and started know. committing crimes with it you'd get in trouble too yeah yeah i would get in trouble yeah. because yeah because because like you're you're yeah, when you buy a gun, it's your gun. Yeah, right. Yeah. It becomes your gun. It's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. So you you would get in trouble if you if someone if someone were to commit a crime with your firearm, you you could very easily get in trouble if you couldn't explain like a logical reasoning as to why they had it. Yeah. If it if it wasn't stolen. Well, a, a fat man with a GoPro on his forehead was outside the house. Is that a reasonable? <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. In my defense, officer, he was he had a GoPro. He was fat. <laughs> In my defense, officer. And then, <laughs> he, in my defense, Your Honor, he was do, he was doing some he was doing stupid shit. Right. He was hitting the gritty. Yeah, exactly. He, in my defense, he posted cringe on Maine. I mean, that quite literally is what it, what it came down to. But you know, when it comes to when it comes to old boogie, you know, it is what it is. There's not there's not much we can really. There's not much we can say what hasn't been said, you know? No. So all, all we can really do is just say, you know, congratulations. I hope the best for you. Um, you know, do what you can. <laughs> Stop parasocializing the fan base. And that's pretty much what it is. But, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I think we had a lot of topics this episode, so to speak. Oh, and Boogie, if you watch this episode, just want to say, um, and you want to edit my videos... <laughs> Okay, such right. a, you want a job? <laughs> that is such an asshole. I'm just saying, like, listen, man. <laughs> no, we listen. I I have no bad blood with any of these people. Like, nobody does. But at the same time, it's like no, me neither. Best of I you really got it. You got to call it out when you have to call it out. Like, this is the kind of shit that like we shouldn't really tolerate in our community. It makes all of us look bad. All right. Like, I mean, mainstream media picks up on the shit. We all look like fucking, you know e beggar nut jobs. It's it's why it's. I don't know. It's it's just it's just bad all around. I really don't like 
fucking mm -hmm. personalizing the fan base and like pressuring people. I think that's it's just really uncomfortable to see that kind of shit. But uh, maybe that's just me. Uh, maybe that's just us. I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, if you liked today's episode of the podcast, then please check us out. All of our individual channels. You got Nux Taku, Oompaville, The Gamer from Mars, and me, Some Ordinary Gamers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. We are out.